Welcome to SysEng Quick. My name is John and today I'll teach you how to use Ansible Vault. Ansible Vault is a built-in tool for easily handling encryption and decryption of files. It allows us to work with sensitive data such as passwords and API tokens without storing them in plain text. We can even commit Vault encrypted files to public repos like GitHub, secure in the knowledge that our data is safe. Let's get started. In our terminal, we can use the Ansible Vault program to work with Vault files. We can do things like create, decrypt, edit, view, encrypt, and rekey a Vault file. We can also encrypt individual strings. Let's see how we can create a new Vault file. We'll do Ansible Vault create and the name of our Vault file, which I'm going to call vault.yaml although you can work with any kind of plain text data, not just YAML files. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and it's gonna prompt me for a vault password and to confirm that password. When we hit enter, we will be put into an editor to enter our data. Whatever we put in here is going to be encrypted. So this is a YAML file, we'll put some YAML data in here. I'll say password is super secret, and I'll go ahead and save this file. So now we have a vault.yaml file, and you can see it is encrypted. It's not in plain text. If I had used a better passphrase, it might even be secure. Don't use bad passphrases when you want to protect actual information. But I'm just doing a demo, so I made it very simple. Let's go ahead and see how we can view this data. Well, rather than run the create command, we can use the view command. It's going to prompt me for the vault password. I'll enter that. And here is our data back, just as we entered in the editor. If I want to change the data, I can use the edit command. We'll do Ansible vault, edit vault.yaml. And we'll go ahead and put in my vault password. And I can change this password to even more secure with numbers. There we go. We can save that, and now if I view the data, there we go, the vault password has been changed. So what if I decided that my password was really bad and we should probably change it? We can use the rekey option to do that. So let's do Ansible vault rekey vault.yaml. It's gonna ask for my current password, and then it wants a new password. And now it says the rekey has been successful. So if I try to view my vault with the old password, it no longer works. But if I use my new password, it does. That's how we can do key rotation in case we need to for whatever reason. Say our password is compromised or someone picks something really stupid like I did. Ansible Vault can also encrypt individual strings with the encrypt string argument. Let's see how that works. Let's run encrypt string and it asks me for a vault password. I'll give it a vault password, and it's gonna prompt me for what I want to encrypt. Here is some data. On a blank line, we press Control D, and it basically gives us some YAML information that we could place into a file. If I want to give my variable a name, we can say dash dash stdn name, and then the name of the variable. Let's say it's password. Again, give it a vault password, and this time I'll just say it's password. So here, it now looks much more like a YAML entry. We can also echo the information on into the Ansible Vault program. So super secret data, and we'll pipe that into encrypt string. And now it asks for the vault password, and there we go. We didn't have to supply it right here. So that's one way we could automate the production of individual encrypted values. If you want to be prompted interactively for your data, we can use the prompt option. So let's do Ansible vault encrypt string dash P for prompt dash N to name the variable, which again, I'll call password. And then for reasons I don't fully understand, we have to supply an argument here. It doesn't matter what it is. Ansible isn't going to use it for anything important. So I'm just gonna put XYZ. 
So it asks us for the vault password. We'll give it that. And now we get to tell it what variable name we want. So I'll say important password. And the string to encrypt, which it won't display, I'm going to say is I don't know. Okay, so you can see we've got the password. That is what we put on the command line. That's not the one we were prompted for. So we don't really need to care about this one. This is the one we have. So how can I prove this information is correct? Well, unfortunately, there is no decrypt string option in Ansible Vault. Let's go ahead and copy that information and we'll place this into a file. And I'll go ahead and save this. And then let's copy that to another file, say test2.yaml. I'm going to delete the password. So now we only have important password. And I want to get rid of that as well. So if I want to decrypt this, I need to have just the Ansible vault data right here. And I can't have it be indented either. So to fix that, I'm going to cat test2 into said. I will replace any space at the beginning globally. You can see we now have Ansible vault data that is not having any indentation. So I can go t this into test2.yaml. And now we can finally do Ansible vault view test2.yaml with our vault passphrase. And that's apparently what I entered when I was prompted. If we want to see that other information we got instead, we could do that real quick. Let's go ahead and say delete. Oops, too many. There we go. We'll go ahead and save that. And we'll do that cat command again. This time we'll cat test.yaml. And now I will view test.yaml. Wrong thing, test2.yaml. There we go. And there is the XYZ that we originally supplied a long time ago. So there was data we encrypted. So again, why do we need that? I don't know, but if you don't put something there, it just won't let you continue. You have to put something there they prompted. Just ignore it, you only want the prompt version. It can be tedious being required to supply your vault password over and over again. We can store our vault password in a file on the file system and let Ansible use that to encrypt and decrypt our vault files. To do that, let's add an option to our Ansible config file. It's called vault password file, and we give it the path to the file containing our vault password. I'm going to put it in the home directory in private ansible-vault, and I'm going to call the file ansible.pw. Let's go back to our command prompt and let's do vim private ansible vault ansible.pw. And I used a super secure password. This is just a tutorial. But again, seriously, do not use a bad password like this. If you do, your data really isn't encrypted at all. But let's move on. If we do ansible vault view our vault file now, it no longer prompts us for the password. That's much easier to work with. We can also take advantage of a VS Code extension. Let's go back to VS Code and let's open the vault. There's an extension called Ansible Vault and it allows us to easily encrypt and decrypt vault files. So we can do Control Alt Zero or on a Mac I think it's probably Command Option Zero. I'm not sure about that. You can see it decrypted our file. And if we want to go back, again, Control Alt Zero, and it's encrypted again. Much easier to work with than the command line. And this is my preferred method for working with Ansible Vault files. Unfortunately, this will not work for individually encrypted variables. So I don't find those very useful. I would stick to fully encrypted files like this. Now that we know how to work with vault files, let's actually use one in a playbook. We'll go to our file explorer. Let's scroll up to the playbooks folder and under the vars folder, I want to make a new subfolder called vault. I want to call this file proxmox.yaml. This is going to have a secret token for my proxmox server. So 
I usually put all of my encrypted vault variables into a dictionary called vault. I'm gonna say proxmox and root token. And I'll copy my token over here and we'll go ahead and save this. Okay, that looks good. So now we need to encrypt this file. We have a couple of options. We could go to the command line and we could run ansible vault encrypt and then the path of the file so that's collections, Ansible collections, sysenge quick, tutorial, playbooks, vars, vault, proxmox.yaml. And you can see it says encryption is successful. If I go back here, yeah, it is. I prefer using the VS Code extension so I can do control alt zero to encrypt and decrypt right from VS Code. So I won't be using the command line tools anymore but I wanted you to know that they do exist in case you want to use them rather than VS Code. Let's go make a new playbook. Back in our file explorer, we'll make a new playbook called proxmox.yml. Our play here is going to be list proxmox servers. We are going to run this against the local host because it's just running API calls. We don't need to gather facts, so let's set that to false. And in our first task, we will gather Proxmox server information. Now we can use the community.generalProxmoxInfo or VM info to gather information about my Proxmox servers. I need to give it the API host, PVE local technoplaza.net. The API user is going to be root at PAM. The API token ID is Ansible, and the API token secret is going to be vault.proxmox.root token. And I think I have to supply the node, which I think is PVE. Okay, let's go see if this works. On the command line, we need to add a new Python module. So let's do poetry add proxmoxer and requests. There we go. Now we'll try to run our playbook. So let's do Ansible playbook sysengquick.tutorial.proxmox. And I forgot to include our vault file, so that was my mistake. Let's go back over here and let's add a vars file. And the vars file is going to be vars vault proxmox.yaml. Okay. Let's try that one more time. There we go. It said it worked. Didn't display much, but it said it worked. So let's add dash V and see if we get any more information. Yeah, we get a lot of information from that. So yeah, I can see my most recent host I put up there, the jammy host. So yep, this is definitely working. So you can see it's pretty easy to use Ansible Vault data within your playbook. And we didn't have to supply a password because in our config, we're using this password file. Now, if you weren't, you might notice something different. Let's try that again. Ah, it says there's an error. It couldn't decrypt the vault. To get around that, we can use the dash J option to prompt for the password. Okay, let's press enter on this. We'll copy the password in there. And yeah, it works just the same. But it's a lot easier to put your password into a file when you're running it and not have to worry about entering the password every time, especially if you're doing iterative development. Before we go, I wanted to point out one more option for our Ansible config file. It's the gathering option. We can set this to explicit. Now, what this does is usually when we go make a playbook, we set gather facts to false. That's usually a good choice. And this option makes that the default, where it doesn't gather facts automatically, but rather you're required to say true when you want facts. I think that's a better default. So let's go ahead and remove that, and we will say gathering is explicit, and let's rerun the playbook. So we do the playbook, we'll go ahead and run that again. You can see it didn't gather the facts. So if we go ahead and go to our playbook, and say gather facts true. We'll go ahead and save that. Run it one more time and see now it gathers the facts. 
And although it's not really slow for one server, it gets very slow if it needs to do this over and over again. So that gathering option is a great time saver. And that's the basics of working with Ansible Vault to secure your secret data when using Ansible playbooks. We'll be doing that a lot more in the future. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helped out the channel, and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.